Zach here from Universal Air, and today we're going to go over several tips and tricks on how to properly wire up your compressors. We're going to go over selecting the right wire size, whether to use an 80 amp solenoid or a 40 amp relay, and the advantages and disadvantages of both of them. So right here we have the two most popular ways to wire up your compressors. You do the 80 amp solenoid, whether this one by PAC or the Viair solenoid, and a standard five prong or four prong relay. This one right here made by Viair is the four prong, so it's missing that center prong, which we don't use anyways. So when it comes time to wire them up, they both serve the same purpose. What it is, you have your switch circuit here, which would be your ignition from your pressure switch and ground, and that'll connect your battery side to your compressor. And same thing on here, you have ignition slash pressure switch and ground, as well as the battery to compressor. All this unit does is it uses an electrical signal to switch and a high amperage circuit. So this is low amperage, this is high amperage. So when it comes time to select which way you're going to go, you can do the 8 amp solenoid or the regular relay. The main advantage to the solenoid is you can run multiple compressors. Um, it is rated for 80 amps. Whenever you're running compressors, you do want to run twice the rated amperage on your switch, basically in this case a solenoid, opposed to what your compressors will draw, because when the compressors do start up, they will have a voltage, an amperage spike when they try to get the pump start to move. These regular 40 amp relays are good for a single compressor. If you were to put two of them on, either one, two compressors on this, or say four compressors on this one, you're gonna have a drastically shorter life of either unit because you're working them too hard on your startup. So what we have here is a quick mock-up of a simple setup using a single compressor, the regular 40 amp relay, a pressure switch, and the wire to go up to your battery. Whenever you're running a longer length wire. Essentially, you mount this close to your battery. You want this to be as close as possible. And the, the wire that runs from the fuse to the relay, you need to run a decent enough gauge for the amperage that you're going to be drawing. Um, with this setup right here, as a quick mock-up, this was going to go to your ignition. So from the ignition, it goes to the pressure switch. So when the tank pressure is below your set pressure, the switch will close, which will connect the ignition into the relay. The other um, switch circuit side gets grounded. And then from your battery connects to the bottom of the relay or the 30 prong and then the top we go to 87 which would be the output so when this has ignition and ground it's going to connect the battery to the compressor and then once the pressure inside the tank reaches the turnoff point it'll end up disconnecting this or if you were to turn the key off so it no longer gets ignition on this side that'll end up turning off the relay which will turn off the compressors now when it comes time to wire it up we always recommend running the pressure switch on the ignition circuit Technically, yes, you can run this as the ground side, and then on the other side of the relay, you run that to ignition. However, we recommend against that because at that point, you're gonna have three hot terminals on your relay and one ground, and if something was to get inside there and short between them, if you're connecting the pressure switch on ground to any of the other hots, you end up instantly frying the pressure switch. Whereas if you have it running ignition into the pressure switch, if it was to short to the ground miraculously, you'll end up blowing the fuse on the other end of this, opposed to destroying your pressure switch. Now, when it comes time to select your wire sizes, um, the, in this example right here, we have a fairly small bit of wire, but this is just to show an overview. Um, the wire that goes from the battery to the relay, since it's a longer run, you need to run a larger diameter wire or larger gauge wire. If you're running a single compressor, up to 15 feet, you can get away with a 10 gauge wire, which is gonna be about this size that comes on the Viairs. The minute you go longer than 15 feet, you want to step that up to an 8 gauge. And that's good for up to about 20 feet. Now, if you have a really long run or it's a limo or what have you, you are going to want to step that up to an actual 6 gauge that's going to be good up to about 40 feet. If The problem is if you have too small a wire, you'll end up having a voltage drop, which is going to make the compressor itself run slower. So when it comes time to select your wires, there's several different options. All three of these examples are considered 4 gauge wire. But when you look at the actual strands, you can clearly see there's quite a bit less wire on this one opposed to both of these units. This is your t standard high-end audio cable, which they run multiple strands in there, which makes the cable very flexible. This is what they call a battery cable or a welding cable. They do have stiffer strands, so it is a little bit harder to run, but this is very good cable. And this is your typical lower-end um, audio cable where it's got real thick jacket, which is nice to prevent actually cutting into the wire. But if you're basing running your amperage for a four gauge through this, it's not gonna be enough wire inside there. So you definitely wanna make sure you step up on the wire size. So this right here is an actual six gauge wire. And if you compare the true six gauge wire to the quote unquote 
four gauge wire, you can see there are about the same amount of strands in there. Generally speaking, the lower end stuff will run about a gauge size small on the actual conductor. So you wanna make sure you inspect that if you have a lot of jacketing around it, plan on that actually being the next size smaller on the wire. Now for your signaling side, for the ignition to your pressure switch and pressure switch to relay, as well as the relay ground, those wires don't have to be really thick because you're only turning on the relay, which will pull about an amp draw, one amp's worth of draw on the circuit. So regular 16 gauge would be more than sufficient. Um, for the compressor side, if you are going to extend these wires at all, beyond what the factory length is, I would definitely recommend to step up a wire size when you start extending it. So now the part that most people will make their mistake and run into most issues with, they'll run a really beefy power wire to the relay and then they use either the existing wiring or run really beefy wiring on the compressor side, but they always neglect the ground. Whenever you're running electric, like a 12 volt system like this, the power will actually flow from the battery, through the ground circuit, through the motor, out the positive, through the switch, back to the battery. So it flows in the negative direction. So if you don't have a good ground, you're going to have compressor issues because you have excellent wiring going forward, but coming into the unit, it is very restricted. If On a lot of newer modern vehicles, if you just do a straight self-tap this into the sheet metal, even if you grind it real smooth and bright and shiny and you have an excellent connection to the body, that doesn't mean that area of the body has an actual good ground. A lot of these vehicles are just spot welded together, which means that the electrical continuity through the vehicle from the battery all the way back is very poor. If you take a look at most modern vehicles, the like the headlight circuit or the stereo systems, they always run actual ground wires through the factory harness. And whenever they do connect to the body ground, they'll always go to usually a side panel on either side of the vehicle. They don't go down to the floor. Now there's a few different ways you can go about testing this. Kind of my surefire way and the simplest way is after you get everything wired up, turn on your compressor and then go ahead and probe the red and the black wire and see what the voltage is. As far as the voltage at the pumps in the perfect world to be the same voltage that's at your battery, but generally you will see a difference between them. You should never run a regular 12 volt compressor below 12 volts. The more voltage you put into it, the faster the compressor will run and the, the cooler will operate along with the more life you're gonna get out of it. The, the textbook thing that you're supposed to see is you're only supposed to see a 3% drop in voltage. So at the battery with the vehicle off, if you're at 12 and a half volts, you should be about 12.1 volts or higher at the compressor. If you're at 11 and a half volts, you have a voltage drop. The proper way to tell if it is an actual ground issue is you take a multimeter and you put it on the ohm scale, which looks like the little headphones. The first thing you wanna do is check your leads. See if you get a reading on there. In this case, it's a zero. And then from there, you check it at your compressors and you check it on the battery and then see what the reading is there. You're supposed to see 0.5 or less. Some people will say up to 0.8 ohms, but it all depends if you have like five or six ohms or 10 ohms or 50 ohms, that's gonna be an extremely bad ground and you're gonna have really low voltage back here at the pumps. Now, some of you might be wondering, is it really worth going through all this trouble for the compressors? Yes. The biggest reason you're gonna have a compressor issue is because of low voltage. Now, everybody always thinks that the big power wire is the most important part, when in fact it's not. The ground is very important. The power comes from the ground side and it leaves the compressor out the power side. Now, the thing is, if you run too low voltage, you can actually stall the compressor to where it no longer runs. And when that happens, the pump can catch on fire or damage the thermal switch inside or damage the wirings inside the compressor, and it's a big issue. If you have good power going into it, you're gonna have a long, happy life with your compressor. So here's a quick mock-up on how to wire up the 80 amp solenoid. Same thing, you do the fuse up by the battery, you wanna get this as close as possible. And then you run your large gauge wire back to one of the top terminals on the solenoid. And then the other top terminal solenoid is gonna get the power from the compressors on there. And you can put two compressors onto these units. You don't have to run one per compressor, you can do one per pair of compressors. And then on the smaller terminals, one of them gets grounded, and then the other one goes to pressure switch, and pressure switch goes to ignition. Now, one thing I'd highly recommend is don't use this lug right here as a ground distribution. I've seen many customers just put this ground for the compressor onto there, and then run this small little wire down to the body as a ground, and then wonder why their compressors are overheating and burning up. Um, if anything, you can do a bolt 
next to where you have everything mounted at and then put your grounds onto there. And then if that ground section isn't very good, which most vehicles aren't gonna be, then you'd wanna run a separate ground wire up. Generally, whenever we're doing an install, since we already have to run the power wire all the way from the battery back, we'll go ahead and just run a ground wire back with it just to be on the safe side. So here's an example of what happens if you don't get sufficient grounding. In this case, the pump had low voltage running to it. They just had this grounded to the body and it ended up getting this wire so hot that it melted together and caused the installation to actually burn. It's really important to make sure you get good power into your compressor because these things are just electric motors. And if you don't have sufficient power and they can't turn, they go to a direct short and stuff like this can happen. Now something that's really worth noting here is make sure your car can actually handle the amp draw you're trying to do. If you're looking to put four compressors on an old car that has a 100 amp alternator, you might want to upgrade the alternator and the charging system because if that voltage isn't enough to support the compressors, you're going to have low voltage at the pumps. Hope you guys found that information helpful. I know wiring isn't everyone's favorite thing, but hopefully some of this will take the mystery out of it and help you on your install. Any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you soon.